This is five on your side at five, focused on you. We begin tonight in a weather alert as temperatures continue to climb. After a week of cooler temperatures, the by state is now under an extreme heat advisory that's expected to last all week. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. We could see nearly five days of triple digit temperatures this week, and the humidity is going to make it feel even hotter. We have team coverage on the heat warning. Let's first head over to Weather First meteorologist Gary Frank, who has been tracking these extreme temperatures all weekend. Gary. Yeah, and we know that it gets hot around here in August. There's no doubt about that, but it's the fact that we have the humidity and just the nature of how hot it's been and the consistent uh, significant heats around. Looking outside, there's not too much of a breeze, but the, the serious issue for us is now through Thursday and maybe even a little longer, the excessive heat warnings in place for our entire area. Right now, I want to take a look at a couple of numbers. One, we're sitting in the upper 90s, officially 99 degrees, but it feels like 115. You'll notice that dew point at 77. You know, a couple of mornings ago, and it was nice and crisp and cool. That number was at 53, 55. It feels like 115. It feels even hotter off to the worst or off to the west, where our temperatures are even worse. And locally, it's well over 115. So that's why uh, the significant heat and humidity uh, play a significant factor. And we'll extend another alert day through Friday. I think that heat holds on. Alert days, excessive heat warning. Overnight lows are not much below 80 because it's so humid outside. And with highs near 100 and the significant humidity, your body just is not going to be able to take it for being outside. We'll discuss the significant heat and look all the way through Friday before we get a little bit of a break over the next few days. And it was a hot final day out at Baldwin Days. The St. Louis County Festival wrapped up for the weekend. But the first few days of this event were much cooler than in years past. Now temperatures threatening to hit the upper 90s today. Parents and community members trying to stay cool. And five on your side's Diamond Palmer spent the day in Baldwin. She continues our team coverage right now, Diamond. Mike, people in Baldwin are trying to stay as cool as possible, but also soak up the last bit of summer. Right now in Baldwin, about 2,500 customers are without power, according to Ameren. And despite the excessive heat, Baldwin Days continued with its last day. In its over 45-year history, it's never been canceled for the excessive heat. Everywhere you look, people have a cold drink in their hand at Baldwin Days. It's really hot. Lucy Ulmer and her family braved excessive heat Saturday to enjoy the community festival. For the fourth grader and her family, it's one last fun memory of summer before the start of the school year at Parkway District. We just thought it would be a fun way to spend the last day. Um, we thought we'd brave the heat, come out for an hour or so, get some rides in, and then um, go to the pool after. The Ulmer family is one of dozens who still came to the last day of the event with scorching temperatures. Daryl Holman with the Baldwin Days Committee says heat is always a part of the equation. We dealt with this before. Um, it's, it's definitely going to slow everybody down today, but uh, we just make sure that uh, everybody has plenty of water. Which is what plenty of people did who came today. Others opting for a lemon shakeup. Ulmer says this type of heat is something to be mindful for as her children head back to school tomorrow. You know, the schools are nicely air conditioned. I'm a little worried about, you know, recess, but I think it'll be OK. In the 45 years of the event, it's only been canceled for COVID-19 and a severe storm, never because of excessive heat. Now the committee planning it says over the years it's shrinked from 70 members planning to now just 10 members planning the four day event and Baldwin days ends at 530 this evening. If you are without power in the Baldwin area, the city says Ameren has been notified. They're also warning people to be careful in the area around Manchester Road because some stoplights are out. Diamond, thanks. As temperatures continue to rise, we want you to be weather aware. And if you need a place to cool down, just text the word heat to 314-425-5355. We'll send you a link to the cooling centers open this week. Right now, a funeral home in Jennings is boarded up. The Austin Lane Mortuary sustained serious damage after a car crashed into the building. Police tell us a man crashed his car into the side of the building around 1.22 a.m. The driver was taken to a hospital. He is expected to be okay. No one else was injured, but the building does have extensive damage. A weekend of community building and celebration. In less than an hour, the We Power Weekend wraps up in Hyde Park. 
The three-day event began Friday with a garden party at the Missouri Botanical Garden and wrapped up today with some yoga and brunch in the park. We Power is an organization that advocates uh, for and supports communities of color. One organizer shared the heart behind this self-care day. We know that it's just as important to build thriving businesses, to build wealth, and to change laws as it is to take care of ourselves. So Self Care Sunday is a way to wrap up the weekend by saying, let's care for ourselves so that we can better care for each other. We Power works with Black and Latinx owned businesses and policy groups all year long. This was the second year they hosted an event like this. Right now in Wellston, a back to school event is underway. The community is out at Trojan Park for a block party. Live entertainment is underway and continues all night. They're handing out free school supplies for the community. They also have on site resources available for families, from music to water activities for kids. The goal of the event is to help motivate and encourage students for the upcoming school year. Organizers say the event is also about supporting educators and the event ends at 8 p.m. As kids head back to school, area libraries are hoping to give kids a place to go after school. Starting tomorrow, St. Louis City and County Libraries will provide free after school snacks to kids. Their partnership with Operation Food Search is allowing to provide healthy options too. It all starts tomorrow afternoon. You can find a full list of participating locations when you look for this story in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. We're just a week away from our annual telethon to benefit the Muscular Dystrophy Association, and the reason we do this is to help kids like little Kenzie Graves from Villa Ridge. Kenzie was born with a disease called spinal muscular atrophy, which destroys the muscles. It was a frightening diagnosis for her parents. You hope and pray that everything's going to be normal and normal kid, and you know you're going to do all these things and teach them all these things, and then now all of a sudden they tell you that. She might not live to be two. But as you'll learn in tonight's Making a Difference report, now there is hope. And it's all thanks to you. <laughs> Kenzie's amazing story. That's tonight at 10. Heavy rain already hitting parts of Mexico as the southwest braces for an historic tropical storm where Hillary is heading now. And a family loses everything in the Hawaii wildfires. The ties they have to Missouri.